Thank you, Commissioner. Afternoon, Prime Minister. Neil Chandler for the Chinese Canadian Concern Group. My clients are a group of Chinese Canadians, uh, professionals, journalists, uh, activists, who are deeply concerned about China's efforts to interfere with our democracy. In their daily lives, uh, they see Chinese language media in Canada touting uh, People's Republic of China party lines. They see Chinese Canadian community associations being overtaken by agents and proxies of the CCP. And they see CCP proxies attending political fundraisers of all parties, including uh, of your own party. Um, they see Chinese Canadians being threatened, intimidated, and coerced to return to China for speaking out against China's human rights abuses at home and abroad. Uh, will you agree with me on the, the basic premise that hardening this country against foreign interference is critical to ensure the safety and security of Chinese Canadians? As I've said before, um, particularly in case of Chinese Canadians, uh, diaspora groups are usually the first victims of of uh, foreign interference, and we need to continue to do everything we can to keep Chinese Canadians safe and to keep them um, from uh, the uh, impacts of interference by the PRC. And will you commit to ensuring that partisan politics will not get in the way of the government's efforts to respond to this problem? Uh, I have uh, endeavored every step of the way uh, to minimize the impact of partisan politics when it comes to foreign interference. Um, it is something that we have always taken seriously, something that we have not tried to uh, politicize, something that uh, can't always be said for other parties, but uh, for us, uh, it should be something. that all Canadian parties uh, can agree on, that protecting Canadians of all backgrounds here in Canada uh, should be something we all work on. In your testimony earlier today, you took us to a meeting with President Xi Jinping uh, at which the issue of overseas police stations came up. Do you recall that evidence? It, it that was more on, on, on interference in general. I didn't mention uh, overseas police statements, uh, uh, stations, but I did talk about uh, active foreign interference. That was the G20 summit in Bali in November 2022, correct? Indonesia, yes. And your evidence earlier today was that it wasn't a conversation that went very well. Is that right? Half of it was on video. I think people saw that. And, and that following the meeting, uh, foreign interference in Canada continued, and it, in fact, it may have even increased. I think we've seen a steady increase in foreign interference uh, over the past years as uh, China has grown more and more... Um, assertive and aggressive in uh, promoting uh, and defending uh, the Communist Party of China's uh, goals and agenda. Uh, this uh, isn't how China has always been, even in the, a decade past. It has gotten much more aggressive over time, uh, and uh, Canada will has continued to work with partners and allies around the world, but also has continued to strengthen its own abilities uh, to counter a rising um, negative influence of China. Did you advise President Xi that continued foreign interference in our country was totally unacceptable? Yes. And did you advise President Xi that there would be repercussions uh, to the Canada-China relationship if that activity was to continue? That was implied. What was your sense of his reaction? Um, he, I think it's, it's well understood that he, he and the um, PRC officials and the Communist Party of China uh, deny that any such interference is, is happening at all. The CCP has already shown that they are willing to flaunt our laws, to flaunt Canadian sovereignty. We see that in the actions that they've taken here, especially with respect to these overseas police stations, perhaps. Does diplomacy with the Communist Party of China have a meaningful role to play at this point in time in deterring and countering foreign interference by that government? Yes. Diplomacy always has a role to play. Um, as, as has been pointed out a number of times, we have diplomats not so we can talk to our friends, but so we can talk to our adversaries.
And to stay on the subject of these overseas police stations, you're well aware that this inquiry has been tasked with uh, investigating Canada's capacity to detect and deter and counter foreign interference. And with respect to those stations, I suggest that it appears we were not able to detect them. They were detected by a foreign NGO. Um, at this time, we've made no arrests and there's, we've expelled no diplomats as a consequence of those operations in this country, uh, doing nothing, and I suggest, to deter those threats. And we may not have effectively countered these threats uh, as those operations may still be continuing in this country. Uh, do you agree that the example of the overseas police stations uh, serves to highlight various weaknesses in our system, in our limits to intelligence, our inadequate criminal laws, some of which, uh, with the passage of Bill C-70, may have been rectified? Um, but the need to enhance trust among the diaspora, the intelligence to evidence problem, and, and simply the futility of diplomacy with China. This example hi highlights all of those weaknesses. Um, I would contend that the example of, of Chinese police stations highlights most uh, the aggressive uh, nature of China and how it is increasing uh, its tools for repression of, of uh, its nationals or its, uh, its uh, um, people who are originally from China everywhere around the world. Um, it is something that we have been uh, pushing back on significantly. We'll continue to use all tools, whether it's uh, legal or diplomatic or uh, intelligence, um, and we will continue to seek to protect Canadians and ensure that they are not being um, impacted as much as possible uh, by hostile state actors. And do you agree that if operations like that are continuing in this country, that Canadians who are at risk, members of the Chinese Canadian population, ought to be informed of that risk? Uh, I think part of this commission and part of the work that Canada is doing is about highlighting the reality of foreign interference while at the same time we continue to take action uh, against uh, various nexuses and, and vectors for foreign interference. Have you or has your office at any time weighed in with the Minister of Public Safety on um, Canada's response to policing those overseas police stations? Yes. And what has your, uh, and, and how so? Please explain. Uh, well, when, when the uh, first reports came out, uh, we uh, turned to, uh, to the Minister of Public Safety and, and his team and said, uh, uh, you need to follow up on this and make sure that we're dealing with this appropriately. And are you concerned that there have not been any uh, arrests or charges in respect there have to this? Been, there have been many follow-ups, uh, and I know that work is continuing to be ongoing. Are you concerned that those operations may still be continuing in this country? Um, Chinese attempts at interference continue in this country, uh, so we are going to continue to try and prevent them. Mm -hmm. Prime Minister, I'm going to shift gears and, and ask you about something else. Um, th this public inquiry will undoubtedly make a valuable contribution to our country's efforts to combat foreign interference, and it's brought sharply into focus the many significant steps that have already been taken to combat foreign interference. With respect to many of those steps, we've heard that they happened as a reaction to what you referred to earlier as the criminal leaks. They led to unprecedented briefings uh, by CSIS with parliamentarians and uh, the criminal leaks at least contributed to the expulsion of Xiao Wei. And while those leaks uh, undoubtedly, without question, put our intelligence agents and sources and national reputation at grave risk of harm, there is a sense that we might not be here in this room had they not occurred. They galvanized the public around issues of foreign interference, and they led to the appointment of the Special Rapporteur and ultimately perhaps this inquiry. Uh, do you agree with that assertion? And as a 
two-part question. How can we ensure that future governments and security agencies work together in an effective, measured, and proactive way on the ever-changing nature of foreign interference so that that type of situation doesn't occur again? I actually deeply disagree with your original contention that it was uh, the leaks uh, that spurred this government into action on uh, foreign interference. Uh, like I said, uh, we started engaging with the issue of foreign interference back in 2016 while we watched uh, the American uh, presidential election. Uh, we created the rapid response mechanism in the lead up to the 2018 uh, G7 uh, that we hosted here in Canada in, in, uh, in Charlevoix. Uh, we then moved forward on an MC focused on protecting democracy, particularly from foreign interference, where we established a site task force and a panel of five. Uh, and various other mechanisms to assure the integrity of our elections. Uh, we move forward on the creation, uh, not just of, of NSICOP, the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, but of NSIRA, the National Security and Intelligence Review Agency. Uh, we then move forward uh, on uh, a number of MCs, including uh, the hostile uh, actors, uh, hostile actions by state actors uh, MC that directly resulted in uh, C20, and I will point out that the work on C20 started long before uh, there were any leaks. So certainly, uh, I will uh, agree that the uh, sensational nature of those criminal leaks um, piqued the curiosity and attention and concerns of Canadians around the issue of foreign interference, but it was very much something with which this government had already uh, been elbows deep in dealing with and uh, has continued to. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Commissioner. Thank you. Attorney General. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. I have a few areas uh, to cover. First of all, I'd like to clarify what role you play, if any, in the CSIS warrant application process. Uh, first, as CSIS is preparing to apply for a warrant, would you ever be briefed? No. Have you ever seen a CSIS warrant application? No. And a Van Wienen list we've heard can be a part of a CSIS warrant application. Uh, so I think you've answered my question, but I'll, I'll uh, make extra certain. Have you ever seen a Van Wienen list? I, I, I have, have not. Um, I don't really even know what a Van Wienen list is, uh, as like most people uh, in this country. Um, the Prime Minister doesn't have any role in the issuance or processes around granting a CSIS warrant. That is something that we are completely out of. It is entirely the purview of uh, the Minister of Public Safety. Uh, I think you've probably also implicitly answered my next question, which is, do you have any information about who might be on any Van Wienen list in a CSIS warrant? Absolutely not. The next area is to, to clarify who has the authority over certain actions that CSIS may take. First, um, my friend Mr. DeLuca suggested that you, the Prime Minister, could direct CSIS to carry out a threat reduction measure. Is that correct that you have the authority to direct CSIS to carry out a TRM? And if not, what role do you play? It No, CSIS, no, I, I do not have, have that, that role uh, or authority. Um, CSIS makes a determination uh, of itself and can and does regularly grant TRMs on its own initiative and of its own initiative. There have been situations where in conversation uh, with our National Security and Intelligence Advisor or uh, perhaps uh, the CSIS Director, I've suggested that a, a, a TRM might be a useful tool to pursue in this particular case. Uh, but that is uh, not my uh, authority to grant. It is direction that they can choose or not choose to take. Um, but it is a tool that has proven useful in alerting people to the impacts and dangers of foreign interference, and uh, I encourage its, its use wherever necessary. 
Now I want to ask about a slightly different CSIS action, which is um, the, the, the action of providing a top secret briefing to a political party leader. Um, I understand historically that wasn't something that could happen, but the, the decision by the government to offer the leaders top secret briefings, to make that something that was available for them, I believe you said that that was something that you uh, played a more direct decisional role in. So can you um, contrast that authority from the TRM authority that you just said belonged to CSIS? Um, yeah, you know, whether it's a brief, uh, um, non-secure, unclassified briefings to parliamentarians uh, or uh, defensive briefings or uh, TRM's threat reduction measures. Um, these are all things that CSIS has all the authorities necessary to choose to do when they feel it's warranted uh, as uh, their course of, of operations and behaviors and how they fulfill their responsibilities of, around keeping Canadians safe. The decision to grant uh, clearances to the leaders of political parties uh, is a decision uh, that uh, needs to be made by government itself, and that, in this case, by, by, uh, by my government, by, by me to a certain extent. Um, it is not something that um, happened often, if ever, in the past, and one can imagine certain governments not wanting to do it at all for opposition leaders or, or others. Uh, but given the serious matter of foreign interference and the impact and the anxiety, rightfully, that Canadians feel about the actions of uh, hostile state actors uh, in Canada, um, it seemed to me a responsible step uh, to uh, offer uh, security clearances to uh, the leaders of the uh, parties in the House of Commons. Thank you. Uh, so, Prime Minister, this public inquiry has happened, uh, at least in part, because there are questions about whether Canadians can and should have confidence in important things like their elections, the parliamentarians who represent them, and the resolve and ability of their government to defend against this threat of foreign interference in democratic processes. From your perspective, from your experience, can and should Canadians have confidence in their elections, their parliamentarians, and, and their government's resolve? And if so, why? Well, first of all, on the matter of uh, the integrity of the elections in 2019 and 2021, we actually created for the first time in this country processes whereby uh, top public servants and our security agencies would uh, monitor and if necessary uh, go public about threats to the election's integrity as a way of ensuring that the election integrity uh, holds. Uh, and that is why we have heard repeatedly throughout this process and over the past years uh, testimony from all uh, top intelligence officials in this country that the results of the 2019 and 2021 elections were determined by Canadians and by Canadians alone. That is a big thing for Canadians to feel confident in, that despite attempts at interference by uh, foreign countries, Canadians decided the outcomes of those elections. Now, what this uh, commission has, uh, I think, further demonstrated is uh, the depth and the extent to which this government has taken seriously uh, the responsibility of protecting our institutions, uh, our democracy, and indeed Canadians from the actions of uh, hostile state actors from um, the countries that have uh, been uh, named a number of times throughout this, uh, this process and others. Um, I think Canadians can see uh, the extent to which um, we have developed tools, we have created measures, uh, we have uh, moved forward on initiatives uh, that are all designed to protect our democracy in 
uh, a world in which the threats are increasing, in which the uh, impact of active authoritarian states uh, is being increasingly felt. Uh, in which democracy itself, uh, everywhere around the world, is under threat. I think part of what this um, commission has also demonstrated is that for everything that the federal government can do, it is not alone in its responsibility to counter uh, and protect against foreign interference. As I mentioned earlier with the UCC, diaspora communities have been stepping up uh, their tools in terms of uh, sharing with their members how to protect themselves against foreign interference. Uh, universities and businesses are working on that, and indeed uh, political parties, many of them have decided to uh, get their leaders briefed up so they can avail themselves of uh, top secret information or secret information uh, to ensure that they can look Canadians in the eye and say the integrity of our political party processes holds. Um, it is an ongoing effort and it'll never be enough. It is something we're constantly going to have to uh, update, renew, bring on new tools on because the world we are in is a complex and dangerous one. But our ability to be thoughtful, reasonable, and responsible in developing those tools to both protect our democracy and uphold the freedoms and principles that uh, make our democracy strong uh, is something this government works on and continues to focus on every single day. Thank you, Prime Minister. Madam Commissioner, those are my questions. Thank you.